everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish, The Conqueror! Last episode, we went and rebuilt Fort Muck, and also went and built a, few, a whole bunch of things in there in order to upgrade it, and even upgraded it so we'll get more iron out of it. Oh, that is so wonderful. But we still need more resources. We ha will have to go and upgrade Fort West Bay eventually, with another, uh another smithy, but that'll come later. For now, we went back to the town here because there are some messages here, and I also want to do some other upgrades. So let's start by seeing what we have here. You hear Delia's voice. Oh, yay. Rupert, are you there? You say hello. I have heard. You have rebuilt a second of our forts. That is true. Then I commend you. I knew that if we trusted you, you would perform admirably. Now you have made two forts in the nations of Sacramentum. Nations that betrayed us. That should be our enemies. You may be wondering something. And what am I wondering? Why do they allow us to remain? Haven's soldiers are strong, but they are few. Sacramentum United wants to throw us out. They can do so easily. Will they do so again? The question crossed my mind. Some of them will always want to throw us out. However, we offer wealth and power to those that help us. As long as those who want us outweigh those who don't, we will be safe. So what is my job? Diplomacy. Exploration. Find people in their lands who will be ally with us and protect our forts for us. Buy them off. Then they will be our vassals again. You start to respond, but she says, I must go. Mother has arranged yet another suitor for me. A suitor? Yes, yet another titled wealthy dullard for me to meet. She is concerned about my solitude. Oh well, I will politely meet him and do my daughterly duty. Bye. And she is gone. Okay. Miranda, an envoy of the Ukatish is waiting for you. The swamp folk are easy to recognize. He did his best, but his leather jerkin is stained and his beard is wild and uncombed. He stares boldly at you as you enter. Chief Miranda looks tired. Miranda, who is this vassal? Prince, this is Aaron. He comes from Nikala with angry words. Aaron nods. The soldiers of Haven have returned to our lands. We can tolerate this. We have missed trade with Haven. We have been poor since the calamity that drove you away. However, our people are being insulted. We are proud. We will not tolerate this. You know something about the calamity? He is surprised by the question. Of course. We all know that some curse drove Haven away. It is a great mystery. None of us know why it happened, and many wish it had not. We all know this. Back to the matter at hand. Who is doing the insulting? Your soldiers, your merchants, all of you. It is bad enough. The centuries of contempt. The Ariel, the Vole, like they aren't mad or stupid. But they always look down on us. We won't put up with it from you, too. What sorts of insults? Swamp feet, stink worms, dirty, smelly, mud heads, insults to our women, our morals. Our lands are a swamp, yes. We earn our bread. We kill when we must. He is getting really angry. Then what do you want me to do about it? You are the prince. They will listen to you. Say they can't insult us. Beat those who don't obey. Ex execute those who offend our honor so we don't have to. We won't tolerate it. Miranda, opinions? Miranda gives a little cough. <coughs> Execution might be a little on the harsh side. However, the Ukatish are very, very proud. And touchy. Very touchy. Some diplomacy might be useful. How should I punish soldiers who disobey? We will be insulted no more. Do whatever it takes to get them to stop. Haven is strong, but we have our limits. Our rage must be heard. I've made a decision. Aaron nods. Chief Miranda looks longingly at the undone work on her desk. Uh, have General Ajax tell his soldiers that aggravating our vassals will not be tolerated. Aaron nods. Thank you, Prince. A bit of politeness will be greatly appreciated by the Ukatish. It would be a refreshing change of pace. He makes a half-hearted semi-kneel and walks out. Good luck trying to get people to be nice to the Ukatish. Our soldiers love to make them angry. It's just so easy. You can always try, though. Yeah, I don't want to allow that. I'm not going to, like, execute. 
Alright, what have we got here? We've got a whole bunch of runes and augments. Strength rune? We've already got one on you. You know what? I have an idea. I'm going to put another strength rune here. We've got a healing augment, which... Actually... We've got room for an augment. Bleed and poison, bleed and poison. Okay, those are both resistances. Curse rune, I don't think is really something I care about. You don't have room for augments. You've got a ble healing bonus and blessing duration. That's definitely useful. Plus, it's a physical armor. You have an augmentation space there, an augmentation space there, one there. You've got a lot of augmentation space. You... Hmm. I guess we can put the bleed and poison... Actually, the bleed resistance would be very useful. Now that I think about it. And a healing augment, I guess, wouldn't be bad. You... I guess we can put a staunching augment here. We'll need to see what else we have in augmentations. We'll need to buy a few, I think. I think we buy them from here. Uh, let's see. I want to make runes. Cheap shot, curse rune, shock rune. Okay, shock rune, I'm definitely going to put on you. You're definitely going to use that. Uh, I'm going to swap out the dead eye rune there, so you can have a strength rune and you can have a dead eye rune, which is fine. Uh, augments. We've got quite a few. Actually, a speed bonus would counter the speed penalty. No. I'll let you have the healing aug. Mm. Physical armor would actually be a good augment to have. Even if some of these are pretty good. There's a lot of augments here. We actually have access to quite a few. You've got room for so many augmentations. Hmm. <sighs> bleed and poison resistance. Like I said, bleed resistance is actually going to be good in the coming area. I think we'll leave it for now and go put in the uh, put in the augmentations I want. Not the most exciting start to this episode, I know. Okay, you are going to remove the dead eye rune and put in a strength rune. Okay, hold on, I need to swap out the runes. This goes to you. Now, install augments and runes. Uh, let me see. Okay, it has to be augments. Preserving and healing augment, sure. And you are going to put in the dead eye rune. You've got nothing, you've got nothing. And you are going to do the you wand for shock rune. And you are going to get... You know what? Put this, uh, staunching augment in that one. That works. Okay. Now that that is done there... With that done, I want to see if there's anything we have to say in the mire fangs. I have a feeling... Oh! Haven report! Alright. No theft from Haven. No theft from the Ukat. No theft from the Vol. Ariel got nothing. Let's see. So, we got five wood... Quite a bit of stone, which is good. Two iron, I would have loved to have more. And no quicksilver. Fair bit of coin, though, which is good. So I'm going to save up a bit more because I feel like we need more resources now. Anyway, let's speak here. Ewan Barnett. Oop, sorry. There we go. Uh, Fort Muck is being rebuilt, Ewan. So we heard. Now there's only one more fort lost in Ukatish lands. It'll be harder to reach, but you could get even more supplies if it was rebuilt. What was the last fort that needs rebuilding? Fort Darkfen, in the north of Ukatish lands. It's hard to reach, but the general has been sneaking supplies and workers up there with trade caravans. 
If you can find its ruin, you can command for it to be rebuilt. Where's Fort Darkfen? In the north, to the west of the town of Chind. All right, thank you. And we can kind of see it right over there. Fort Darkfen. Unfortunately, it's past Ganelspan. So right now, we're going to work on dealing with all this. All the territories we can. Let's see if General Ajax has anything to say. No, he wouldn't. Okay. Now. That was like ten minutes of exploration. Let's try taking a look to the south of Fort Muck. I want to waste some time. I gotta keep my eyes open for anything that we can collect. There are several large farmhouses ringing Fort Muck, waiting for settlers to come and rebuild them. When Haven fled, the houses were carefully sealed. They survived the decades of your absence surprisingly well. Shadowy Swamp. As you travel south, you find that, amazingly, the swamps of the Yukata are becoming even creepier. The road becomes a mud track. You see no settlements. People don't come out here. The mist muffles all sound. You keep your hand near your weapon. You sense great danger ahead. Claimed land. Turn back. All right. All right, we've got hostile creatures. You meet several Ukatish people in the mist. They seem like nobles. Their clothes are slightly nicer and less muddy than usual. They are coming from the south. They are strangely dazed. They don't notice you until you're right on top of them. They stop and look at you, but they barely seem to see you. Inspect them. They're an odd lot. Different ages, not family. All nicely dressed. The main thing they have in common is that they are still dazed. They wander through these dangerous lands as if they don't have a fear in the world. Hello. One of them, a young woman, finally seems to notice you. Oh, hello. You aren't from these parts. You're going south. We understand it. Are you all right? Yes. We were just thinking about the dreams. It takes time to fully understand the messages of the dreams. Dreams? Yes. Dreams. Visions. We are in the proper time. We are awake enough to control our thoughts, but asleep enough to remember the dreams. This is the wisdom time. Who gave you these dreams? We don't know. The Nise? We think we met the Nise. We can't remember, though. Only the dreams. Can I share in these dreams? If you are chosen. If the Nise approve. If you live. Excuse us. The wisdom time has ended. We must learn what we can. We... And then they walk off. All right. Well, we've got a bunch of spiders to deal with. If there we go. Trapdoor spiders. Yeah, let's get them fought and killed. Nice. These guys aren't so tough. Sure, it's supposed to be dangerous here, but we can kill them. And definitely another shot. Excellent. Now for this one. Ow, but we're fine. Excellent. That wasn't too bad. So we've got another bit of the Nisei here. This tower doesn't look like it's what it's supposed to be. Let's see. At the end of the path, looking out over the water, you see a tall tower. It is beautiful. It seems to gleam. The doors at its base beckon you. Enter the tower. You walk toward the tower. Then you find that it is a mirage. It vanishes without a trace. You hear a snarl behind you. Something has emerged from the woods. Oh, dear! Giant spiders I did not see coming. Alright, a fireball should deal with these. Very nice. Yeah, we can work on those. Out. How about a brutal blow? That's not something I care about too much, especially because now immobile. That worked well, though. Yeah, focus on that giant spider a bit. You can kill that one. Poison, not happy about that. Okay, that one died from bleeding, I guess, which is good. 
That one's gonna die at the next shot, probably from Patricia. Or from you. Um, give a healing wave. And now we can finish this. There we go. You try, you clean the greenish bug goo off your weapons and try to figure out where these creatures came from. You find nothing of interest. More spiders to deal with. Uh, you are going to wait. Because I wanted them to come closer. Now this... Uh oh, damn it. Slowed. Damn it, slow! I keep forgetting! But getting them all crammed together, that is actually something good. Now, whirlwind attack! Ow. At the very least, we're doing more damage. One more to kill. Ow. Alright, you are going to give a healing there. Not as much healing as I'd like, but it's fine. And I believe we may have found where the Nisei are hiding again. But there's hostile creatures. Alright, let's fight them. As you walk through this narrow pass, a creature rises up out of the mud. It is a serpent, 30 feet long, with an intelligent and malevolent face. A naga, one of the unique and vicious perils of these lands. She snarls at you, swaying from side to side. The motion is hypnotic. You have to bite the inside of your cheek to maintain your focus. Hello, naga. Yes, hello. This pass is mine. To advance, you must get through me. What lies ahead? The spirits of Sacramentum. The deep spirits. But they don't deal with your kind. Not unless you prove yourself. I don't want to have to kill you. It is all right. You can't. You are too weak. I can see it plainly, little prince. Ah, <sighs> Fine, let's do this. You charge the Naga, hoping to destroy her before she can take control of your mind. When you get close, bones erupt out of the mud. Now a line of skeletons stands between you and her. Battle Frenzy! Seems like the best idea. A snake. Not too keen about that. Will it affect the Elder Naga? Yes, it will. I think... Yep, poison. You get that serpent dead. You get closer. And charmed! I am not keen about that! Okay. We can do shockwave. Need to be a little closer. One more. That should get most of them. Perfect! Stun for all of them. I am not too keen about our ally being wounded like that. Or charmed like that, I mean. That Naga needs to die. How long is this charm going to affect? One more turn. Ah, another charm! Very bad. I probably should have healed Elspeth. At least, I definitely should have healed Elspeth there, but now I can get to the Elder Naga. Shield Shatter. Okay, we can get this. You are definitely going to heal her. Ch 
Charm resisted. Take that. Brutal blow. That thing's gonna die in one more turn. Actually, it's probably going to die next next move it gets. There we go. Beautiful. And there we go. The Naga and its bony pets have been destroyed. You search the sand and bones of its lair, but you find nothing of value. At least the pass ahead is now open to you. Refuge of the Fen. All right. Right then, let's take a look. You enter a lovely courtyard open to the sun. Local plants have been planted in an aesthetic arrangement. It's quiet and peaceful. Passages lead into the hill in three directions from here. You have clearly found another of the refuges run by the mysterious Nisei. Private quarters. Yeah, again, we can't open it, as I expected. Ah, it's another one of these. Yeah, I have a feeling that's where we're supposed to go last. Oh, damn it. This puzzle isn't actually that hard. Once you get how it works... Bing, bang, boom! A little extra experience. And these are the portals. Okay. A man sits waiting for you. He sips wine from a mug and rises to greet you. He doesn't kneel. Greetings, Prince. I am Gahal. Greetings. Gahal smiles. You have won your way into a refuge. One of several we Nisei keep. There is much I want to know. Of course. I will tell you what services we offer. We want to be of use. It is how we humble Nisei earn our keep in this world. And now you are here. We are so pleased. Let us begin to help you. Who are the Nisei? There are few of us. Outcasts and hermits. Members of a private... clique? Is that the word? We live in remote hermitages and low places. We know a little magic. We sell our skills, like hedge mazes, to earn what we need to live. Where did the Nisei come from? Oh, I don't know. We have been around for a very long time. Longer than people remember. I want to know more about you. He smiles sadly and pats your arm. Oh dear, such anxiety, such a reluctance to ever stop working. Please let us serve you. We'll free your mind of such worries. Do you have a homeland? No. We occupy low and remote places. There we offer our magic to earn our keep. We have our powers, but we are humble and private. We don't like to talk about ourselves. What do you think of Haven? Ah, Haven. We find you arrogant, demanding, not respectful of privacy. Bullies sent by a tyrannical queen. You want to discuss politics? Ah, I am sorry. We spend too much time isolated. It makes us forget our tact. Let's forget politics. Let us serve you. What services do you offer? We have two unique services. We offer travel and we offer dreams. You can step a thousand miles in a moment, or you can step into a new un unimagined world in an instant. I operate the portals. For ten pieces of gold, I can send you to the Vol or the Ariel Woods in a moment. You sell dreams? Yes, but I am not the saleswoman. Go to Costell in the West Wing. She is grumpy. But she would love to help you. I don't need your services. Anything else, then? That's all I need. Then I hope that you will remember the Nisei in the future, when you need peace or nourishment of the sp spirit. Safe travels to you. Thank you. I have a feeling that's for where you, when you arrive. Rest and dreams. You enter a lovely inn buried under a hill. It is actually clean, the cleanest place you have found in the Yukat. You smell wine and fresh, rich stew. The tables are set for customers. Yet there are no customers. It's eerily quiet and still. 
The innkeeper watches you from behind the counter to the north. And in here, a pile of wood. We could actually use the wood. This Nisei wipes down a rough wood counter with a square of white cloth. She grimaces when you approach. Traveler, I am Costel. The Nisei welcome you. We will satisfy your physical needs with food and drink. We will satisfy your spirit with dreams that amuse and instruct. Where are you from? She immediately becomes agitated. <coughs> I am Nisei. We are everywhere and nowhere. We are also private. I just want to know more about your kind. Ah, I do not chatter. I just run this in. If you want chatter, talk to Gahal. He has the time to waste. What food do you have? The stew is done and ready. You can have a bowl. We also have water or wine. We don't send travelers out into the road hungry or parched. There will be no charge for sustenance. You are a very special guest. I am content, thank you. I am pleased. You sell dreams. We sell a room to rest in. Once there, you may find that the atmosphere here is conductive to particularly deep and rich dreams. A room is but thirty coins. A high price for an inn, yes, but we get no complaints. What will I experience? I can't say. They will be your dreams, a product of your memories and your experiences. Vague, yes, I admit it. However, as I said, we get no complaints. I want to dream. She takes her coins, counts them, and leaves. I will unlock one of our rooms for you. She leaves the main hall for a minute. I have unlocked room one for you. Enjoy your rest and the visions that come. Please be sure to rest before you leave the refuge, otherwise I will need to rent your room to another visitor. Of course. That's room one. This is room two. I have a feeling we can't go into these other rooms. Nope, that one we can't go into. Neither that one. Room one it is. A new month has begun. Items in stores are cheaper today. Hmm. You fell asleep the moment your head hit the pillow. You had a long, restful sleep. Then you woke up. As you lay in bed, your head was full of jumbles of random thoughts. You rose. You feel deeply content, utterly peaceful, yet you can't remember what happened. As you walk away from the bed, the bits of thoughts in your head start to clump together. You tease out a few memories of your night of dreams. Where were you? You didn't recognize it. That was what you wanted, to be in a new place. Not Sacramentum, not Haven. But where was it? It doesn't matter. It was a new place. You were free, on a road, in a town, into an inn. You were at a bar. Someone was at the far end. Your eyes met. You smiled. Then you went out together. You ate a meal of... It was different. Delicious. What was it? You can't remember. All you know is that you were far away and you were free. Huh. So the first dream was of us becoming... Well, basically the ruler of our country. But this time, we're dreaming of being somewhere else, completely free. Curious. Let me see if there's any new information in Fort Haven. Anything new that occurred. Stonehouse, any messages? Not at the moment. Uh, no, we need nothing else. That's all. Actually, you know what? Stonehouse? I do have a job for you. Uh, my hair is unsightly and I do need a trim. Stonehouse produces a pair of scissors and a towel from somewhere in his pockets. He sets you up on a chair by the wall and, with a series of fast, efficient motions, makes you entirely presentable. It's been a month! We could use the trim and looking a bit better. Okay. All is good. And with that, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Next episode, I think perhaps we'll head up to Foundry Clive. That seems like a good idea. We'll get some more metal out of it. Probably a bit more wood as well. We could use all the resources we can get. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44. That is Rupert, Elspeth, Terence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish the Conqueror. And I shall see you all next time.